Welcome back everyone, this is Dom. We are playing Dom in Space! Kerbal Space Program is actually what we're playing. <laughs> so this must be, I think, episode 7. Uh, last episode we sent Probe uh, up to... Ooh, cat's talking. Uh, <laughs> last episode we uh, sent a probe up to um, Eve, or into Eve, if you want to put it that way. Uh, and it looked very similar to this, uh, but it's not this one. This is the one that's going to Duna. Um, that's actually its name. I renamed it to Duna Probe. We have uh, basically the same conditions here, uh, except now it's on a trajectory out to Duna. This one is. But we're not going to stick on this uh, this probe today. We're actually going to start our uh, our moon mission today. And I gave a kind of some hints at what our plan was for that. Uh, I think last episode. So. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of jump into that. I will see you on the launch pad. Okay guys, welcome back. <laughs> we uh, just launched off the launch pad here with like a bazillion solid stage or solid fuel rockets. Um, this is uh, our first mission to the moon. This mission's supposed to include, well, it's going a lot better than I had before. Um, this mission is, uh, has a little bit of the top, but it's kind of loud over there, so we're going to scoot back a little bit. Um, so basically it has these huge stages of, uh, solid-fueled, solid-fueled boosters. And, uh, then it has our standard stages inside. I just have been using the exact same, uh, rockets recently. There goes our first set of solids. And, uh, this one will bring us up to a good speed and height where we can just start our normal stages. This is really interesting. It's not spinning. It was spinning the last time I tried this. Oops. There's my phone again. And the cat's very active, so I apologize if it jumps in my way. Or on something that breaks. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for the loudness to go away before I jump over there. Back into the rocket. We are still at sunrise. Uh, that's actually when I launched the last probe. So basically I just jumped out of the probe and into here. Stupid phone! I uh, should have put it on silent or something. Oh no, the cat looks like it's going to cause some problems. Maybe, who knows. Uh, okay, so just about to stage. There it goes. Go away. And off. Awesome, perfect. Cat's in the way. Up the screen. Okay, now, now she's not. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to nose over a lot here. This is intended for the moon. And uh, as you can tell, it's upside down. Uh, it's actually a rover and tank setup. Uh, what is this whole thing is, is basically a, uh, a way to get uh, a Kerbin, a Kerbal guy, around uh, the moon and uh, to refuel them continuously. And I wanted to do that. Ooh, man, I should be paying attention to this stuff. Yeah, we spent way too much fuel. Boop, cut the engines way too high. Man, hopefully we don't have to redo this one. But I don't think we will. We usually have enough to fuel to do this, what I want to do with it. Uh, we might just have to cut into this big supply of fuel here. Anyways, um, hopefully we're not using these. Uh, when we when we stage, we're going to have to turn off those tanks, because for some reason it takes those tanks. So that rover on the top is actually there to... Hold on, I'm going to... Uh, basically hold a Kerbin, and uh, we're going to see it when we land. Uh, we're going to be able to try this out. I've actually not successfully landed this just because I was like, you know what? It will work if I actually pay attention, So, because uh, I wasn't really paying attention too well beforehand. So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So this tank here is basically going to be our fuel supply to be able to come back, refuel, go to a different biome, take a surface sample or whatever we need um, and just kind of do that along those lines. I should have added, and I regret this now, uh, uh, the new science stuff that we just got. Um, I don't know where all the science stuff on it is. I don't know if there is any, but we can always just send up another rover as long as the tank's up there. Oops, I forgot the stage a long time ago. I should have. Man, I'm doing really bad this recording. Um, we are just gonna round this out as best as possible and then we'll go to uh, shoot towards the moon. If 
find a decent spot to land, uh, relatively flat, hopefully. Probably inside one of the, the many, many craters that pepper that moon. Awesome. Just get this thing out, about, and round. Come on, come on. Run out of fuel on those outside ones yet. I think I need them. Boop. And just give me periapsis that works. Oh, we out of fuel on those. Dang it. And that works. Okay, cool. Now we got to shoot for the moon. So we'll do that very soon. This is uh, kind of a fast-paced uh, launch episode here. I'm sitting around and watching. Uh, that's really close. Don't want that. That'll actually work. So we'll get ready to burn for this one. And uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of fuel left on... Uh, these stages here to be able to to capture us in the moon and uh, the basically the top part is good enough to do it on its own uh, to land on its own I've already tested that out not with the rover attached though so uh, but we'll we'll see it uh, in the near future there's no RCS on this so I can't really undock it and then show you it until we land more or less boop, boop. oh yeah let's go ahead and just get over to that node and that's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and burn this. So, as you can tell, we're shooting for the moon because it's over there and it'll bring us around, etc., etc. And I also uh, like the fact that we're in basically the sun the entire time. Um, I want to extend my solar panels because we're probably going to lose power uh, in that amount of time that we are in transit to the moon, which is in five hours, so we probably will run out of steam there. And, yeah. So this tank is designed to drive under with the rover. Um, I put the, the legs at barely the right height to be able to basically drive under with, a uh, back under, with a Kerbin uh, on the seat here. Uh, also, this is, it can be remotely controlled with the, the probe bottom here. Um, and you just back under and you can dock and refuel. So that's really cool. And uh, we'll be able to fly wherever we want if we need to you know, get out of a tight spot with these, uh, these little engines in here. They're thrust limited down to 10 just because basically they're really powerful. There's two of them on there, so that's like four kilonewtons of thrust, which is good enough for me, definitely. Oop. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And we'll just do one of these, move this back, and we'll take the node off so you can see what we're doing here. Boop. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, that's good. Right there. Perfect. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and jump out there. Blup. 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 Here we go. These are all probe missions. I like to do the probe missions before um, we start doing manned missions to these bodies here. I think what we're going to do is end up landing in um, the, f the near side, or the back side here. Because I think I've already landed in both of the craters facing Kerbin. want to find a place that's relatively flat as well. 13 minutes, and we'll do a prograde, uh, retrograde burn to give us a nice circular orbit. Okay, retrograde burn coming up. Kind of turn this bad boy over. It's so nice. I'm leaving the moon's reveal for a little bit later. I was kind of happy that coming into this view is was without it in view. Stage only. And we definitely have enough fuel to round this out. We are officially captured by the moon. Captured. A 
awesome. Cool, that'll work for now. So, uh, give me a couple minutes to uh, figure out where our landing zone is going to be, our landing site, based upon, mostly based upon, uh, where I haven't been, and uh, a place that's close to multiple biomes that we can explore with the rover when we bring up a crew for our moon base here. So I will be right back. Big reveal. Whee! Big moon, big moon. All right, we're back. And I did a little bit of research. Um, I figured out kind of my, lo my ideal location for landing uh, on this surface. So we are actually have a trajectory planned out already. I moved uh, to about a day into flight so that we would be in the sun when we landed. I wanted to make sure you guys could see. And we're going to land in between the two uh, craters that are um, on the back side of, uh, the, of the moon here. So since uh, the moon is tightly locked with the with Kerbin here, uh, that means this side always sees Kerbin and this side never sees Kerbin. So we are on the, I guess the best way to put it is the dark side of the moon. So I want to land somewhere right around in this area. Uh, so I planned a trajectory to kind of fly over it. We'll do a, a burn here, uh, kind of to do one of these, boop. And we would land kind of in that area. So we are going to get rid of that node though. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll land right around there and we'll be able to either kind of fly our little rover over to this crater and a couple other ones, a couple of these big ones. Uh, this is, I think is Highlands. I think these are Highland craters. This is its own biome. This right here is its own biome. Uh, this is, I think, a canyon. There's also another one right here. So yeah, we can do a lot of biome stuff. Um, so we're going to get to our node and we're going to go into the sun at our node here. Yay, there's the sun. We can see again. I can see. Okay, let's get the node going here. 50 meters per second delta V. This is just to kind of align us where we wanted to be. So I'm gonna wait a couple more seconds. There we go. There we go. And lining's done. Awesome. And right around uh, here, we can add our retrograde burn, but I'm just going to add the marker in for now. Boop, boop, boop. Just so we know when to start. And we got two minutes, one minute. Let's go ahead and get our retrograde set here. We're just going to kind of burn along the horizon though. That's kind of the plan. And we'll go at about a minute. There we go. Awesome. We should just get rid of that node while we're at it, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to burn a little bit so we can start uh, our descent into this little pocket area. Looks like there's a flag on it, but there's not. <laughs> Wrong direction. I'm not paying attention. Oh, I think I ran out of fuel. I ran out of fuel! Okay. So that is that stage. We're now going to control from here. Oh, gotta flip ourselves over. Here we go, and then we'll control from here. I think that works. Nope, it's still upside down. <laughs> I guess the uh, the probe body is upside down on that guy. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just control from here then. No, control from here. Awesome. Gets our ball, nav ball back to the right positions that we need. And let's go ahead and fire. Oops, I didn't want to fire these. Shut down. Don't really need to worry about it though. We're just gonna go ahead and whoop, fire those. Hopefully we will 
be able to pull ourselves to a a decent landing spot. We'll see. As long as our trajectory downwards, uh, respect to the surface, is as vertical as we can get it, that's exactly what I'm looking for. This is probably not the most efficient way to be doing this, but that's how I do it. I like to have fun. Here we go, carefully making sure that we're just about vertical here. We have plenty of fuel. Um, it just looks kind of weird because we're actually draining out of these little tanks. I forgot to get rid of them. Uh, make it so we're not draining out of them anymore. Just, just about vertical. There we go. So we have a vertical descent into... Wow, that's a decent place. I think we landed basically right where I wanted to. Almost. Uh, I was kind of planning in this area or this area, but this works too. <laughs> So we're going to get down closer, a little bit closer, not too close, and that's good for now. Just slow ourselves down a lot. I don't know entirely how long I need to burn to bring our speed down here. I didn't do that math out. And now you kind of can understand how this works. Um, the tank lands uh, and the rover is separate that very shortly actually as soon as we can get this in the right position there we go I actually had to put a reaction wheel on the top here uh, because I was having problems with controlling it uh, when I tested this um, off camera hopefully we don't land I think we'll be okay not landing on that in that puddle there going a little bit faster than I wanted to. It takes forever to slow this big thing down. Definitely not ideal um, to be doing it this way, but it works. And the cool part is, is if I ever need a replacement tank, I don't need to bring another rover up. So I can just fly another replacement tank wherever the rover is. Uh, if, for example, get stuck somewhere, just bring the replacement tank up fuel up and I can get back to base um, where I'm assuming I will land the command module too uh, for not command module the landing module uh, for our probe mission there we go we got my shadow I always use my shadow love using the shadow there come on you can do it can do it. Almost down. This thing's just so heavy that if I don't pay attention for too long, it will definitely explode. Hitting the ground. I actually had that happen to me while testing this. I was like, yeah, it will be able to land. <laughs> so I'm like, eh, it'll be fine. I'll do it on camera. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Getting down here. Really low, really low, really low. Slow us down. There we go. Kind of getting a little bit nervous. Okay. Just about... Just about on the moon. Come on! I've never done this before, so I didn't even know it was gonna work this well. Awesome! We did it. Sweet. Oop, oop, oop. Did not want to do that. Did not want to do that. There we go. So awesome. Oh. Ooh. There goes a lot of stress away from me. Okay. This is what I wanted. I want to do these. We are going to transfer. Um, all of the fuel into this main tank here and then uh, we'll be able to oop, out out fuel this guy here Whew, man that was kind of crazy wow 
So we're not entirely flat uh, on a flat surface. I could move this whole thing over a little bit. I don't think I'm going to have a problem, though, parking up under this. Um, especially because, oops, I don't know if I got all the fuel. Yeah. No, we're close. Um, especially because um, I can just fly uh, and readjust the suspension. Because that, that tends to be a problem with the setup, is that the suspension, suspension wants to... Uh, kind of sag in a little bit so I can't drive under perfectly. We're going to take this thing out for a spin. Let's go ahead and decouple. Woohoo! Yeah! Here we go! Here we go! Brakes! Please! Brakes! Awesome. Woo! Man, this is really cool. And perfect. I did originally use uh, RCS for this uh, mission. It was basically uh, a the exact same rover that you can see here uh, except for these tanks were not here these liquid fuel tanks were not here we had RCS in the front and in the back big tanks and we had RCS thrusters there I didn't trust it um, to be able to fly on the surface but we're gonna try this one now activate Oop. okay my thr throttles all the way down good should have paid attention to that I don't know if this will work Oh, it does. Look at that. The brakes on. Wow, this will actually last quite a while, too. Uh, full throttle. I think this thing lasts for... Uh, I think the fuel lasts for upwards of like three minutes if I have the whole thing packed. So, that is so cool. Let's go ahead and just bring it back. Awesome. Perfect. So this will work very, very well, even if we have a, a Kerbin in here. Um, these are thrust limited down. They last. The fuel lasts for quite a while. Wow, I am so happy. Uh, that is going to be the end of this episode, though. We are going to bring uh, Kerbin up here next time. Uh, he will... We are already a day into this mission, so we got to keep an eye on all our probes that we're sending out. Uh, we have one that is very much closer than the other targets. Uh, and we have one going towards Duna, and one that I still have to rename. And there's noise on the outside. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.